Hello, I'm Mark and I post two useful tutorials like this one every week, so consider subscribing to my little YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about five common mistakes that we all do in Affinity software. This is geared more towards beginners. We got many new users this month as this 50% sale is still up until the end of May, so there are many new users and we are a little bit flooded with some beginner questions in several affinity groups that I belong. So I was thinking about just gathering the most common mistakes, troubles and errors into a one video so we can resolve them all here. But that's not only for beginners, sometimes even advanced user have troubles with some features. So let's talk about five common, I would say, mistakes. All right, so the first one I wanna talk about is crooked artboard or tilted artboard. So at least once a week, we got one person that screamed for help <laughs> in the Facebook group that everything is tilted and pixelated and ugly. So what is the common cause of that? You trigger a shortcut for rotating your artboard. It can be done very easily if you use a magic mouse or mouse with the touchpad above. So let me show you. If you go to view, you can from here rotate your artboard. So everything is rotated as you can see right now. And that's what people are really, really afraid of because as you can see, the rotation also bring some pixels at the edges in the preview mode as well. So everything is rotated and you don't know how to go back to the normal view. So to go back to the normal view, you simply go up, view menu, and then you will see reset rotation button here. As you can see, there's also a long shortcut that you can trigger, like options shift common R. So you can simply go up here and click reset rotation and you are back. So whatever you rotate to the left, to the right, then you can always reset this back. But how we can prevent that? In my case, I just switch off this touchpad rotation. I got magic mouse myself and it's always trigger me. If I try to do something too quickly, put both fingers on the mouse and somehow rotate my artboard. So, what you can do is to simply go to the setup. So Affinity Designer, Properties, Preferences. And then in the tool section here, this little icon, you will see options for rotation of your canvas. So normally I think it's on here and on here as well. So you can rotate canvas by trackpad. You can rotate your canvas by using common scroll wheel as well. Just simply switch this off and thanks to that you will not rotate your canvas by mistake. All right, so that's if you got shifted canvas, that's what you need to do. You need to go to view and reset. All right, the second common mistake is uh, units. You got troubles with some units. You set up documents in centimeters or inches, then it's somehow changed to pixels, how you can change it back. So it's super easy. If you got your ruler on like this one, you can see rulers. You can simply click here, right click, and you can move between different units, pixels. Let's move to centimeters. And it's also changed in the transformation panel as well across the document. All right. So if you got your rulers on, you can change it by right clicking on this corner here. If you cannot see your ruler, you can go to view and you can show rules. You can also use shortcut. It's common R or control R on Windows. Okay, uh, mistake number three is overusing effects, especially for people that uh, this is the first professional software for them and they just discover all of those pixel all of those effects here on the layer styles, we got layer effects, we got like, we can blur stuff, we can add shadows from here, 
and the most overused effect i believe it's amber so you're adding this light here at the top and the shadow at the bottom let's make it even darker like this so sometimes you guys are got very decent very nice flat illustrations and then you ruin it all by adding tons of effects on them and they look not that good so sometimes keeping stuff simple is all right it's good all right so don't go with effects over the roof use them wisely not all together <laughs> okay mistake number four is digital painting method so people that switching from like procreate let's say they got some experience with fine art or digital art they may try to make illustration same way as they did in those raster editing programs so the, in, they simply take a lines tool like this and then they try to they try to draw lines stroke by stroke join like this and they end up with having tons of open shapes they got lines like this and then they try to figure out how to fill this area with color but here why we editing vectors very often we work with shapes so instead of drawing your objects as set of lines we just set them up as shapes and then every shape got property like color fill color so take a look on my drawing here on the left side i just build it from shapes i can deconstruct that for you take a look we got shapes shapes and some of them are very basic shapes that i can draw with shape tool all right so we use shapes more often than just strokes of course it all depends on the art style but in general when you're dealing with vector arts usually we try to aim for close shapes all right and the last mistake and the solution <laughs> it's when you got your text with the color box around you see the color of the text you can modify that but this color around is still here and it looks strange and that's very often a white color so sometimes you cannot say that first but then you're adding some background and then you see it happen very often when you copy text from the net or from different documents so to resolve that to get rid of this colored box around your text simply open properties so click on the text first let's click here character properties you will have pop-up box like this you can also turn it on and off by common t shortcut and from here you will see the text color font color but also the background color for the text something you cannot see from the color menu so now i can change that but most of us will simply kick this away so i just kick this by using transparency it's gone now and I can use shape if I want to make a background for this text like this so I got my text separately and the background separately that's easier to manage all right guys so now we know how to get rid of this color box around the text now we know that we should aim to have close shapes in our designs take it easy with effects special layer styles you can simply change units over here at the corner and you can always reset the rotation of the canvas in the view menu over here. I hope those tricks are helpful and I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye!